I move on to the next one. So that is the Kanban. So this Kanban is actually mainly the tool which is going to be used for the inventory control. So when I was explaining the lean concepts to you, I told you that until unless uh, there is a trigger from the customer, then only you should, uh, you should start uh, working on uh, the producing the product or service for you. So don't produce anything against anticipation, right? So there are two types of approach in uh, we can take. Either it's a push type of approach or pull type. So push type is when uh, there is no request from the customer to do that, but <clears throat> you have the capacity in terms of the machine time or manpower so then uh, in order to ensure that uh, their mission time or the manpower is not wasted, so you just produce some of your products or services and keep it ready. Assuming that whenever the order or the request comes from the customer, then you'll be able to deliver it immediately. But that's what uh, we call as a push type. So the concept, what we are following here is make all we can, just in case. That means whatever is possible to produce with the available resources and the machine and the other resources whatever we are having we make all what we can produce don't bother about the orders and so that in case the order comes then you will be able to deliver it on immediately so that your uh, resource utilization will be uh, resources will be fully utilized so this is what is the concept is the push time but again this is not a really a good approach because here you are uh, not producing against the firm orders from the customers it is only based on their anticipated usage, only because of the based on the, the respected orders what you are expecting to get from the customers. So if those orders are not going to come through, then there is going to be a problem. Because sometimes, uh, for example, I was working for electronic computer manufacturing. And uh, if in order to ensure that uh, during the time whenever we are not having enough orders to fill the capacity, we then uh, produce uh, some items based on the last year's uh, Volume, whatever you have produced for the same customer. If you produce, we may take, take a decision that okay, we will at least produce 50% of whatever was supplied last year and then we'll keep it ready. So that this year, when the customer is getting the order from the customer, we'll deliver it. But again, this is a very risky because if that product becomes obsolete, right? Because you know that electronic industry, the design changes quite happen quite frequently. And if the last year's design is changed uh, this year, and uh, the customer is going to ask for an entirely diff newly, uh, uh, different uh, new design uh, for the same application, then whatever you have produced is going to be a waste. So that is why it is always not uh, uh, advisable to produce uh, any product or service based on anticipated orders. Right? You should initiate the production activity only when the, you have the order. So if you are going to go for this push type of production, again, you are going to produce large lots and high inventory. A lot of inventories will be there. Wastage will be everywhere. Because again, since people know that it is not going to be delivered to the customer, then people uh, tend to be extra cost. They, they need to be like uh, lethargic. So there is uh, some sort of a compliance set, set system. And everywhere, wastage and uh, 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 crap will be there in the throat of flow. So the push type of uh, production system is not really advisable. Whereas the, against the pull system means make what is needed and when we need it. So that means exactly you produce whatever the customer wants. So once the customer triggers, okay, he says that I want this to be done, then you just take only that particular that much amount of fund. Don't produce anything extra. Whatever the customer uh, needs, you just produce it and then give it to him, so that. Uh, there is a pull from the customer, always the customer will be pulling that. So since the customer is going to pull it from that, then uh, he'll always be after your sales department, where, when, uh, when the supplies are going to come, then the sales will uh, put pressure on the quality team. Quality team will put pressure on the production team. Production team will put uh, pressure on the stores. Stores will put pressure on the purchase. Purchase will put pressure on the finance. And again, the finance will put pressure on the marketing to collect the money, right? So that means, and again, the marketing will put pressure on the customer to pay for whatever has been the previous supply. So in that case, the loop is fully energized. They are fully motivated and they will always be like the efficiency will be very high. But instead of that, if we don't have the orders and then we start producing, nobody is really motivated to follow up with anybody. And then we started with 100 units and then we end up with uh, scrapping some 20 and then 30 or 40 for even and only 30 or 40 being transferred to the 
So again, that is not the efficient way of doing it. Right? So always you go for a full system. Right? So that means you produce only after getting the demand from the customer. Without the demand or the requirement from the customer, don't do any activity for the customer. So that is what Kanban. So Kanban means so you just keep the try to keep the minimum uh, as minimum inventory as possible. So for example, you have a two stage uh, uh, production activity. So the first one can produce at the rate of 1000 parts every month, every hour. And the second machine can produce only at the rate of 500. Then don't run uh, both the machines for uh, equal hours because if you are going to run it for eight hours, then you are going to produce 1000. But the second machine is going to produce, uh, consume only 500. So in between, what you can do is you can just put some sort of a uh, visual mechanism so that this is the maximum inventory and this is the minimum inventory, right? So this is the minimum inventory you can keep and this is the maximum. So you just run the machine and then uh, you are going to run the machine, both the machines continuously. But since this machine has capacity to produce more, then the inventory in front of the D is going to increase. And then once it reaches a maximum level, then you will have to switch off the machine. Don't produce further, you switch off it. And then this is switched off, only this will be running. So this will be consuming the material so that the inventory will go on reducing. And then once it comes to a minimum level, again, you switch on the machine J. So that by switching on and off the machine in order to um, uh, keep the inventory within this uh, minimum maximum level, then inventory can be controlled in a better manner. So this is a, in any any top floor. Again, you can just always see uh, this type of minimum level and maximum level. And the, anybody who is walking through that uh, area will be able to find out, suppose if the stocks is less than the minimum level, then you can just demand the why it is like that. And if it is more than the maximum level also, you can just ask why it is like that. If always the inventory is going to be maintained within the minimum and maximum, that means the inventory is being maintained correctly. Right? So Kanban will help you to reduce in, in implement the full system and it will also uh, ensure that the inventory that the individual cases are being uh, controlled okay so in your area of work because again uh, whenever we talk about uh, the uh, eight different ways and then which is very uh, area of concern to you so none of you are talking about inventory so is inventory not a major problem for all of you so can you confirm that or can you just now that you know more about this? Uh, can you be or you be can you be able to uh, link it to related to any of your uh, inventories? That that is a problem for you. Uh, what I think, eh, maybe in relation to what we do, because mm -hmm. uh, there are issues that we we do deal with mm -hmm. uh, with regards to client de deliverables. Mm -hmm. so maybe what I'd say would it. Um, would it be more like handling issues reactively and proactively? Because mm -hmm. there are those clients that we do get, and they they most of the times they seem not to know what they want mm -hmm. or what the expectations are. Because you see, they could be new in the industry. Uh, then at the end of the day, they don't push us to deliver. Mm -hmm. Yet there are those clients who are very, very demanding. They are particular and they are key in whatever we, we do. So for these clients who are not, uh, they're not um, they're not that active on the project, they don't follow up, they don't ask about uh, questions, they just wait the end of the month, they uh, pay the invoice and all that. And then there are those that every other time. So for these customers who are not that active, we, we, we become proactive not wait for them to just um, get to the end of the month, then pay the invoice or wait for things to just flow as per what the agreement was. So that every other time we push them, we become proactive by ensuring that we we at all times get to ask questions. We follow, we do follow up. We push to ensure that if there are any improvement that needs, needs to be done on the project, we push to have that done. Uh, then where we have, um, so I don't know, I don't know whether, whether that would relate to it. Yeah, that is again, uh, entirely a different uh, way of looking at it. 
so what uh, you can say that say for example uh, the context whatever you are saying so for example uh, in a particular month uh, you were supposed to do say three activities for the for, for that customer right three activities for the customer and then yes. if you are going to complete these three activities maybe you can write the invoice for 100000 1000 dollars to the customer right yes so that the company is going to get a revenue of 1000 dollars but again there are some customers who are not going to put pressure uh, on you so that at the end of the month so these these are all actually the inventory for you right because of this these are the work that needs to be done but you are not done it because you are engaging something else right so that means this becomes a inventory and if this inventory is not being taken care at the end of the month again the customer is, uh, is going to is not going to pay that uh, 1000 dollars because the work has not been completed you will not be able to write the invoice right so then this can be considered as an inventory this uh, pending work right pending work that has to be completed uh, for that particular month that can be considered as an inventory and then how are you going to maintain it in a very narrow range so that you will always be able to get the uh, revenue from the customer right you are able to maximize the customer by minimizing the inventory i think that way you can relate it right yes yeah okay so i think this will help you for managing your uh, projects also very efficiently so that means even though you may be working on multiple uh, uh, customers multiple clients so you need to uh, put up a plan uh, for like uh, what is the work that will be done for individual uh, clients right maybe for uh, this july month for customer a these are the work we have to do for the customer b these are the different work we have to do and for customer c these are the work we have to do so these are total inventory right these are total inventory and then at the end of the month how you are going to utilize your resources in efficiently so that all these inventory is going to be cleared up because again next month again you are going to have a new set of activity that has been done right so you should not carry forward any inventory uh, of work to the next month right so in that way what is going to happen is if you are going to have some uh, work pending Uh, pending work that has to be carried for for the next month then next month is going to be overloaded and second thing is if you are not going to do the work this month again you are going to lose the revenue so if you are going to make uh, this uh, uh, manage this inventory in a very efficient manner inventory means i am just saying what is the work to be completed that is a, i am considering that the inventory so if you are going to if you are able to manage this inventory in a nice manner then you will be able to maximize the revenue and 